Okay, so hi guys. Today I'm going to do another replay analysis, and this is the voice of Exile Civil One Nocturne. Basically, I'm quite surprised this is a Civil One game, as he's actually a really quite a good player. Uh, first things first, the mana bars, for some reason, in this version of the replay, are like really bright and odd. So, uh, they are mana bars still, so if you see that in the replay, they're still mana bars, they just look really strange. So, I'm going to try a different style of replay analysis today, and it's going to be more of an edited, sort of cut down, but still relatively decently long video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this style more, I guess, and yeah. Okay, so basically here you took Blue Wolf, which is perfectly fine. Good start. This is the old version, so Wolves are still here. You did Wolves to Blue, and then this is the first key thing I noticed here, is that rather than going straight to Red, because you got a Smiteless Pool, the, the main thing to do if you get a Smiteless Pool, because of your XP bar, is go straight to Red. And just smite red and take it. Instead you went to race, which doesn't really gain you any value because you still hit a level 3 from red buff. And you sort of waste like 10-15 seconds of game time to not really achieve anything. So again here, like if this if their jungler was aggressive, now obviously it's in so he can be aggressive, you could have lost your red buff here. If you'd have gone straight to your red and smited it, you wouldn't have actually known because you had no vision of him coming in. So against better players, you really want to make sure you go to Red Wolf instantly, because otherwise you risk getting card jungled, and that's the last thing you want to do. So three minutes in, you went for a mid gank. Now obviously it's a Fiora, so it's not the worst thing to do, but in reality, like you should know, um, this is something every jungler should know really. Basically every single jungler in solo queue does the same thing. They get the double buff, and then they go top lane. Even if the lanes push at this Renekton, that's the first thing they do every single time in solo queue. Now obviously, you don't really want to be up here counter ganking, because you would obviously lose if you came here because of Renekton and Renekton and Xin Zhao versus Nocturne and almost dead pan. Okay, so at 5 minutes in, you're going to go gank top lane with a red buff, almost gone. But the red buff goes as you gank, which is fine still. You get a cut on Renekton and you get assist for first blood. Now, this is another key mistake I see here, is that you got 1,100 gold, which is like a really big amount of gold, honestly. And you should be sat in this bush and recalling, because you need to make use of the fact that you just got first blood assist and you got all that gold. Because when you get a first blood assist, or even just a kill, and it's 6 minutes into the game time, it puts you into a situation where you're pretty far ahead of the enemy jungler, and it allows you to try and steal a buff. Because at 6 minutes, you recall, you get your items, you buy a ward, and by the time you've placed your ward, it's like 7 minutes, and then the buff spawning, and you're in place to sort of take it. Instead, you took raids, which don't really have much value at this point, because you already have so much gold, and it's not like you're going to get level 6 from them, so by taking race, you didn't really do a lot. Um, this is a really key thing I see in low reloads, where people don't know when to recall, and when to do certain things. Instead of sort of recalling, you went and ganked bottom, but you saw this ward was actually placed. You actually saw this ward get placed earlier in the game, so you should have known this was still warded for another like 60 seconds about, and instead you sort of walked into lane and this is, again, it's not really achieving anything. The only thing you're doing is showing yourself on the map, which means that they can take their, like, at this point in the game, if their jungler was good, he would easily take your blue buff for free here, because he sees where you are on the map, he sees your half HP, there's absolutely no way that you can get to your blue buff in time for them not to steal it, basically. And again here, you took golems for not much reason. You just kind of like delayed the fact that if you want to play a sort of jungle carry style, which is what I presume you're going for watching this game before, um, you need to recall and steal buffs, because if you're not stealing buffs, then you're not really affecting the enemy team enough. Like, in terms of just general effectiveness. I don't know, it sounds stupid, but... Yeah, so instead of taking their blue wolf, which you could have easily done because their Zin only just got 6 from it, you could have smite stole it over the wall, you could have done numerous things there to take it. Um, you're just kind of wasting time, really. This is like what it is. It's just a, you wasted 2 minutes, 2 whole minutes of time there to kill golems and race once, which is nowhere near worth it. Uh, here, you see Renekton almost dead. So, you probably should have gone and killed this, but that's beside the point. Your mid gets ganked, you get a nice call on Fiora. Mix in Zao Flash as well, pretty good play. And then you come back, and this is another thing I noted in the replay, was that here, instead of like waiting, because I mean, your Annie's got 46 creep kills, and honestly, like, Annie Fiora is a weird matchup, so I don't want to talk about, like, that, but um, she has 46 creep kills, she's doing an okay job, like, she's in a position to do a lot of damage late game. 
And I don't know if she told you to take blue off or you just decided to take blue off, whichever. But um, that could be a mistake because your Annie seems like a decent player, even though she's died twice. It doesn't matter because she still has a lot of Greek girls. Um, so taking the blue off is a bit questionable because Nocturne does benefit from blue off, but not like a massive amount. So that's one thing to note, really. And again, here, you took your race for no reason. Like, I see, again, this is a, a really key thing. You take race too often, I think. Because when your red buff and your blue buff are up, you need to be making constant use out of the fact that they're up. So, um, if you're not ganking with double buff, then there's no point in taking your buffs, because, yeah, they give a lot of XP, but the whole point is you gank easier with them. So again, uh, just to note, this is 10.30 into the game, and you're still farming lanes and just farming creeps, while Renekton is madly pushed onto this tower. Um, for some reason you're farming, I think this is a mistake as well, because okay, you got 55 creep curves, which is like the highest on your team pretty much. But if you're not affecting lanes, which is Nocturne's job, it doesn't really matter how farmed you get, because Nocturne isn't one of them carries like you there, or fiddlesticks even, just something that can farm and actually carry a game by himself. And here, 11 minutes into the game, you recall with a double buff, with red buff half wasted. Um, big mistake, never recall a double buff, even if you have like a decent amount of gold, which honestly you didn't, you only bought a Vampire Exception on Longsword, which is okay, it's a decent amount of gold, but you only get 20 AD and 10% lifesteal, and it doesn't matter how much lifesteal or AD you have, because you can't really kill anybody without red buff. So about 11.40 into the game, you got a double kill bottom almost, Janna recalled at like 1 HP, and then you went for a dragon. Now, this isn't the best call or the worst call, it's kind of like a risky solo queue style call. Where you're doing dragon with no pink ward, and you know their mid and their jungler are about, so you kind of open to a smite steal here. Now, obviously, smite stealing is 50-50, because you're both the same level, so you're kind of putting faith into your smite here. But at the same time, um, I don't agree with doing dragon this early, just because if you have vision, fine, but you know that they're about, because you've just seen them around here. And doing dragon in solo queue is always risky. So Fiora comes in here, they kill you pretty much straight away, and they run away. Now, obviously again, just to reiterate, if this Zin was decent, he would have run back in here and smited this dragon, and you'd have lost the dragon for free. Now, this doesn't happen at low reloads, but that doesn't make it an okay play, because if you want to get higher reload, then you need to do things that are solid play, rather than sort of, it worked at this point of the game, so it's going to work all the time. No, it doesn't really work that way. Now obviously that dragon fight did come off ahead for you, but I mean, it's just a risky play that there wasn't really any reason to risk, so just bear that in mind for the future, because the other key thing I noted after you bought items was you bought a Cutlass versus 4 ADs. Now, if you're playing Nocturne especially, you honestly do not need a Cutlass of all things, because you already have your coup to be faster than them, the fear, you're all meant to get gap close, you have flash, you have lots of things, and usually a red buff to catch people with. Um, versus 4 ADs do a lot of damage, the best item you could have bought here would have been a Sunfire Cape or something that's just tanky. The Elder Lizard item is pretty good because it gives free easy damage, but um, at the same time I think building a full tank would have been stronger, but Elder Lizard is obviously quite good because it does easy damage really. So that's the only thing you should really know here, is Elder Lizard might have been better than Cutlass, but anything would have been better than Cutlass at this point of the game. So at 14 minutes 20 seconds, you took Annie's Blue Wolf. And again, I'm not sure if she's telling you to take the blue buffs, so I'm not going to make this a massive point. But in general, try not to take blue buffs unless you're actually going to make use of them. So here you tried to gank top, and it turned into this really awkward sort of fight. And you did almost die to it. Yeah, you died to it. And again, you walked into a lane without any vision, and you didn't have a red buff to sort of protect the fact that you didn't have a vision. Because if you had a red buff here, you could have done a lot more. Or even if you had a giant spell or something. This Cutlass did absolutely nothing for you in this fight. So one of the key things I noted this game in my little notepad was that at 18 minutes your CS number is really really strong for a jungler. Like you have 8 to 9 creep kills in comparison to like your team and the rest of the team. You're doing extremely well. Um, if you weren't a hero like Nocturne I think you'd have a better time doing this but I'll talk a bit more about that at the end of the game. So here you took a free dragon, which is always good, and that's two for two dragons now, so you're in a pretty good position to carry the game. So after that dragon, you record and you bought a Warden's Mail and a Giant's Belt, which are both really strong buys. Um, I guess you realised that the Cutlass wasn't doing a lot for you, and needed to build armour and HP. So you give the third level to Annie, which is always good, 
And after this point, from what I've wrote down, Annie gets really, really, really strong. And what I wondered watching this game the first time round was if Annie got the first two blue buffs, how much stronger she could have been rather than just getting the third buff. So that's something to note down, really. Okay, so about 23.30 into the game, you forced an engage, which in my opinion was sort of the first of many fights that led to your loss in this game. And it was pretty much 100% your fault because your team wasn't in a position to fight. And people didn't have flash, people didn't have ignite. Just everything was sort of in this awkward position where you're ahead anyway, so you don't need to fight. You've just taken a mid tower, so there's no reason at all to fight mid because it's not even like you're fighting for a tower. Um, I'm going to watch this a bit slower because I want to see exactly what happens. But from what I remember, it's 100% your fault the reason we lost this fight. So here, they're sort of in this nice position. They've got this like front line and then they've got Fiora sort of mid line. And then Caitlyn's at the front. He's ready to go backwards if he needs to go backwards. And Janna's sort of in a nice position to protect everybody. So basically here, for your team to get past Renekton, they have to kill him. Because he's in like this amazing position where he doesn't have his armor, but he has... 2,500 life, and he's not going to die easily. So, Vayne's going to do decent damage to him. But overall, Annie's going to have to kill him, and between these three people here, there's not a massive amount of damage going down as Renekton. So, you dive in. Everyone sees you dive into Caitlyn. Pantheon makes a quest in Roma, and sort of like, because you went so deep, and your team can't still get past this Renekton, he's still in the way of everybody being this massive tank that's just really annoying. They collapse onto you, you take a lot of damage from everybody, and it's just a sort of awkward fight where even though you initiate onto Caitlyn, he's still just stood in the back, just doing as much damage as he wants to do. So it gets a pretty decent armor, but overall, like, this Renekton gets in the middle of everybody, and just does crazy damage to people. Combine that with the Fjord armor, and your team gets absolutely smashed this fight. And it ends in, from what I remember, like a 4-man, possibly an ace, but... Yeah, so it actually ends in an ace. And again, I don't want to put too much pressure onto you, but I would say that fight was 90% your fault, the reason you lost. Because you had no reason to go in. Like I said, you already had this mid-tower dead. So fighting for nothing, pretty much. Now... That fight could have been different if Pantheon made a better armor, maybe. But at the same time, it wouldn't have killed us, Caitlyn, who was full HP the whole time. And had a lot of Duster. There's no way that would have happened. So, the enemy team actually made a mistake here as well, which you probably capitalized on yourself, properly. They went for the tower, and this is a mistake, again, a lot of low reader players make, where they feel like they have to do something, but they don't know what to do. Now here, you should be able to look at these timers and think, okay, there's no way... Really, we're going to get an inhibitor and get out free. Uh, if anyone has a brain and buys home guards here, they pretty much get a free triple kill because everyone's pretty low, they have no almost blah blah blah. The real good call here would have been like, okay, we can get this tower and then we can go Baron. And by the time we get to Baron, we'll have killed it and they can't stop us. Instead, you sort of went, they went for two towers and then they backed off. Now, this is your call, I presume, because jungle is usually called Baron, so it's presumed this is your call. And you understood the fact that everyone was low enough to the point where... That was amazing damage. So Pantheon killed Caitlyn. Pretty good play from him. And then the Baron call was the most obvious thing to do. Because everyone's low, they're all hurt, they're out of position, Caitlyn's dead, free Baron. So this is one of your best plays here. He tries to smite, you get a nice smite. Well played by you. It's hard to fault anything you did after that fight. The fight was 100% your fault, but then you sort of turn it around into a decent Baron call, and it turned out okay for you, really. Okay, so 27 minutes is the next key mistake you make. Basically, you have three people mid, and you don't have an AD carry with you. They're three alive, and Caitlyn's respawning in five seconds. You just made some cool plays, you got a dragon, you got a couple of cards top. Uh, everything's going pretty well. You should have backed here, you'd have been in a good situation to sort of go back, buy, and then push this tower down, possibly with still Baron buff. Instead, what happened was, you got really, really greedy, I guess is the word for it, or maybe even just too aggressive, and you tried to kill this tower straight up, just killing it. Now, again, if you press tab here, you would notice that everybody's pretty much alive. Xin Zhao is pretty much alive, he's got mobility boots, he's going to be here pretty soon. Now, I'm not sure who called to kill this tower, or who's pinging it, or whatever, but basically how this goes is, they knock you up, 
which is invisible for some reason. They get everything onto you, and I mean, obviously you can split blame between three people, but ultimately if you're trying to carry yourself in solo queue and get high reload, you should be the one moving back, because if one person moves back there, everyone else moves back as well. Because no one wants to say an Annie and a Sona hitting a tower, you know, nobody's going to do that, but by you being sort of this tanky frontline, you kind of baited your team into staying and hitting the tower. Okay, so about 30 minutes into this, there's a massive fight that goes down, and basically you get onto Caitlyn pretty well, which I'll see in about 5 seconds probably, and you can't stick to her because you don't have any innate slow. Um, you don't have a red buff, so you can't stick to people. You don't have a phage, so you can't stick to people. You don't really have any way at all of actually sticking to this Caitlyn, which actually makes you kind of useless in fights at this point in the game. Because even though you have 129 creep kills, which is actually pretty good, um, your item choice is hurting you again. This Cutlass could have been a Phage, it could have been anything else apart from a Cutlass, really. So Renekton gets a really good initiate, actually. And then, here, you do some good damage, and then you decide to ulmer to Caitlyn. You don't even ulmer to her, actually. Hey, you ulmer to Caitlyn, okay. And then, you do some pretty okay damage to her, you half HP her. But then, you're zoning her out, which is okay. I mean, you're zoning her out, you're zoning her out, Annie is doing massive work, Bane's doing work, you get pretty hurt, and then you get away. So, overall, that fight could have been better, but at the same time, it wasn't the worst. You did, you kind of did your job of zoning out Caitlyn, but at the same time, you don't pose enough of a threat to her, where she cares that you're in her face. Um, she can actually just walk past you at this point in the game, because you only have... 194 AD, and most of that isn't really like pure AD because it, it gets filtered by everything else. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, obviously, you can use your Cutlass to stick on her for a little bit, but if she eats backwards after your armor, chances are you won't be able to stick to her. Especially with a Janna helping. So, after that little mini fight, you picked up a Frozen Heart, which is an amazing pickup against this team. Um, they have 4 ADs, it's pretty self explanatory. You're slowing their attacks by 20%, so, really, really solid pickup here. So at 33 minutes you caught a Baron. Um, you had a pink ward, which is a pretty good idea, but you didn't have an Oracles, there were 5 alive, you had no inhibitor pressure, you had no lane pressure really, and it was a really really risky Baron in general. Um, I presume this is your call again, but it's hard to tell. And it's just like a really risky call. It's so easy to get stolen from, or just anything to happen. So you just stay hitting the Baron, and then you almost onto Caitlyn here, from what I remember. No? You, you use your map, but don't actually do anything with it, so that's first big mistake. And then, you do zone Caitlyn out pretty well, but again, if I was just Caitlyn, and I didn't have an Infinity Edge, and I had really questionable items, because Bloodthirst to Shattic Shift doesn't do that much damage, um, I would be really worried about a Nocturne running at me, because how do you kill a Nocturne with them items? It's really pretty hard to do. Now, the problem is, because of the items you bought, and because she has a red buff and people feeling for her, you don't scare her at all. Again, you're not even like taking her HP away. And by doing that, okay, you zoned her out for a little bit, but then she comes back in, just hitting things, she's constantly hitting things. Like, you zoning her out only did things for a little bit, and she's still in a position to do a lot of damage. And he gets caught here. You walk back in and die for absolutely free. Like, because you have no damage and there's no threat at all, you literally died for absolutely nothing, and I think this was actually where you lost the inhibitor in a couple of seconds time. Because you had no reason to walk back in there and die. You literally achieved nothing by it. So Caitlyn's doing massive damage, and they get an inhibitor for that. So 36 minutes you picked up a giant spell. Um, by this point in the game, that is not going to do anything, because you already have enough HP. You needed to either finish your blade, or just pick up something that allows you to stick on Caitlyn and actually do damage. I think the better choice would have been a Phage, or finishing a Blade even, or even getting a Frozen Mallet, or just something that allows you to stick to Caitlyn and not get kited. So it's 3640, is pretty much the last fight. I'm going to slow this down so you can see what happens. Um, you all met in, onto the Caitlyn. Now, you should know here, in this position, the first thing that's going to happen is Janna's going to spam her R button as soon as you're on top of her. You use your W a little bit too late, and you get knocked back by Janna. Now, that obviously hurts quite a bit, because... You just used your mode to get in, and you could have possibly finished Caitlyn off here, but instead of W'ing, you W'd, you didn't even use your W, so like, yeah, that was a confusing play for me. Uh, your team does some pretty okay damage, but again, Caitlyn's sort of left in this really nice backline she has, 
And you're left wandering around. You notice here, you wander around for like quite a while. You're still wandering around. Four seconds, even five seconds of wandering around. You come onto this Zin, but you don't really do anything to him. And he has a GA, so it's like, hmm, probably not the best target to hit. You W nothing, and then you walk back in, even though you could have got away, probably. You try and kill Caitlyn, but again, you don't have any damage, so like, I don't know how you expect to kill him. Just to point out here, if you actually had a Sunfire Cape instead of this Randuin's, or even this, instead of this Cutlass, you would have killed this Caitlyn just by being there. Um, that's a pretty important thing to notice. If you're going to play a full tank, Sunfire Cape is an amazing item, because it just gives you random damage. Like, 40 magic damage a second is a lot when you consider this fight just lasted for almost 30 seconds. That is like 1200 damage to everybody around you. That's no joke at all. That would mean a dead Zin, maybe a dead Kate, possibly if she didn't lie still back, a dead Fiora maybe. It's just like, it all adds up so, so, so quick. And by not buying this item, you kind of hurt yourself. So again, you walk in here and die, and then they run down mid and end the game. So I'm gonna give my final conclusions before the end of this game. Uh, basically, Wrong item choices for the playstyle you were trying to pull off. You zoned Caitlyn out when in fights, but your team didn't follow up, so zoning was pretty pointless. You took early kills and early blues and put yourself in a pretty good position to go to 2v1, Janna Kate in fights. That's what Nocturne excels at. However, you bought the wrong items, which ultimately made you pretty useless in fights. Other key mistakes were the engaged at 23 minutes. That fight gave the enemy team a lot of gold. The main thing I noticed about your playstyle is it reminds me a ton of my other playstyle. Very greedy and a kind of, I don't care, I'm going to 1v5 mindset, which is great if you're actually playing Yude or another jungler that can do that. The problem with Nocturne is, he can't really do that with pure tank items and no damage. The problem with how you built and played Nocturne is you weren't capable of carrying it as you build pretty much full tank and Nocturne's base damage is nowhere near as much as Yude. I think if you're going to play a 1v5 carry style of jungling, which you actually pulled off extremely well, and I'm quite proud of the fact that you had a lot of creep kills, and in general, you played off a very good style on how I like jungling, you should think of picking up another jungler. The problem with Nocturne is, he isn't really capable of carrying, in my opinion, on low reloads, because you rely on your team following up your initiate, and the last thing you want to do is rely on your team, basically. Someone like Yuda, or even Zack, doesn't care about his team following up, as they're basically unkillable after initiating, whereas Nocturne can still die and doesn't really do much damage. I think you're actually a really, really good player, and I'm really surprised you're actually silver. I think your jungling is easily equivalent to a platinum player. If you refine your item builds and champion selection, you shouldn't have a problem moving up. Thanks for watching this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something.